Okay, now to a subject I know a lot about, and that's football. In 1946, one year before Jackie Robinson would walk onto a field in Brooklyn, four black men broke the color barrier in the NFL, becoming the first black players in the league in 12 years. You may have never heard their names, but Kenny Washington, Woody Strode, Marion Motley, and Bill Willis made football history. And here to tell us that story is great, uh, is the NFL great and ESPN analyst Keyshawn Johnson. He's the co-author of the new book, They're Forgotten First. Uh, Keyshawn, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you. Uh, you know, I was very, uh, I was not familiar at all with the story because you know, we hear Jackie Robinson all the time, but we've never heard, um, or I've never heard of these four uh, black men. It's strange to imagine an NFL without black players. Why was the NFL so against having black folks on the field? Well, morning, first of all, Tiffany. Um, you know, it's just, it's like anything in life that we've ever dealt with of our age group. And you know, when you go back in the history in time of professional sports, um, we were not accepted in that world. Uh, we were, this is a, a book about the reintegration of these four uh, gentlemen that was distinguished black men that, that, you know, basically paved the way for guys like myself to be accepted into the NFL. Prior to that, Fitz Pollard in 1934, uh, he prior to 1934, he was in the NFL, but then there was about a 12 year hiatus that went on from 34 to 46 uh, that they said, no, we don't want African-Americans to be a part of what we are building. And um, the reintegration started because the Cleveland Rams at the time were moving to Los Angeles and becoming the Los Angeles Rams. But uh, the Memorial, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum is a public funded stadium and they could not get the lease taken care of or be allowed to play in that stadium unless they sign African-American players onto their oh, team. Wow. And they decided to do so by picking up Kenny Washington and Woody Strode. Uh, there was a was profit, you know, really. big political push. Yeah, it was a, big, it was it was a big political push. Yeah, and yes. a political push. And I want to point out that, um, you know, this is why there's such credo in the black press, because it was actually uh, a diverse press corps that brought this. Black sports writer William Harding stood up and asked the owner um, about what, would he be willing to sign black players. Now, you uh, I've read some of your interviews before that you've done promoting the book, and you've described the NFL at that time as being bigoted. Uh, I would argue the NFL is still bigoted in a lot of ways. What do you think needs to happen to make changes in the NFL today? Well, yeah, I think, it, you know, you go all the way back and you think about it where we are now. Yeah, there's been there's been some change, moderate change, but not significantly nearly enough to where it makes a major dent. Um, I think, first of all, people of color have to be put in a position of power. We are not in a position of power in the National Football League. Uh, we don't own any teams. Uh, we are very few. I think it's like a handful of us that are general managers, CEOs, presidents of teams, and the numbers are right there. 3% are CEOs and presidents, general managers are at 7%. So until we get that number up, we're going to always have some issues because when, when we're not at the table, we've got to be at the table in order for us to be able to, to delegate some responsibility to people of color, minorities of that magnitude. But that's just not something that the NFL has gotten to uh, just quite yet. And what does it take to own a team? I mean, this has been something, the conversation has happened for a long time, uh, and it's still such a challenge. There are black people with money out there who can buy a team. It seems like it's a private boys club that they intentionally don't want black ownership in this space. Well, I think it, there's a couple of things, Tiffany. Here's what I would say. First of all, yes, there are black people that are out there with a certain amount of money, but the, the ownership groups, are they don't have big turnovers in the NFL like the NBA or like maybe Major League Baseball, for instance. This mm. is, these things are handed down from family and generation to generation. Right, yeah. On top of that, on top of that, us as black people, most of our wealth is generated through athletics and entertainment. I mean, yes, we have some CEOs of companies and we have some people that are in the internet world and social world and things of that nature. Yes, we do, but not at large. And so when you think about some of our wealthiest people, do they want to take their money and invest into a professional football team? Right. We exactly. think that it's, it sounds good, but when they look at the numbers and they do the, 
the economics and when these things come up, it's almost like, you know, hey, for instance, yes, there is a Jay-Z in the world who has right. a billion plus dollars. But then there's another guy who has seven or eight billion that right. looks closer to them. And they yeah, say, the you football know what? money is their play money. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So All it's right. a little bit of a different, a different yeah, situation. A different I economics, can't wait yeah. for the day. I can't wait for the day that we do own a team outright. Right. But we just got to continue to keep building our wealth. Yeah. All right. Well, I got five on it, Keyshawn, if you want to go in together. But we are way out of time. <laughs> we'll have to pick up this conversation another time, my friend. Please come back on the Cross Connection. It was lovely having you.